Yeah, I practice in Seattle, Washington. I uh, have two practices there. I own both of them. My wife and I practice together, and then we have an associate that currently works with us and an associate that we're in discussions with about contract. And our practices, we specialize in various different things. Uh, my practice uh, revolves around cornea and contact lens, and my wife's practice revolves around pediatrics, binocular vision, and then the um, the associates uh, kind of do glaucoma and, and uh, vision therapy and so forth. So we're trying to do a kind of a subspecialty practice within our own. Okay, so I noticed your practice is going towards specialties a lot. Yeah. Uh, where do you think optometry is headed within the next five to ten years? Is there going to be a lot of specialization? Yeah, well, you know, I think that uh, that as, as general optometrists, we have some really good opportunities uh, just with the products that we offer, with the contact lens technology that we have, and then with the way that medical, the medical model of optometry is going. So I think that the average Joe Blow optometrist, the vast majority of us, are going to still continue to just do just fine. Um, but if you want to set yourself apart, one way to do that is to consider doing a residency, consider looking at certain areas that you can specialize in. So for instance, you go and speak to a, an optometrist and say, hey, I'm interested in um, you know, joining a practice and I have a, a specialty that I'm interested in growing that may be outside the scope of where that practice currently is. And it makes you know, us as uh, optometrists much more desirable for future optometry practices. Okay, and did you plan this out during your time in optometry school? Did you do you have any recommendations for how students in school now can prepare for this kind of future that you're referring well, to? Well, you know, I think in in school it's so uh, so easy for us to just get caught up in our everyday life because it is so busy. I mean, optometry school is not yeah. the easiest thing in the world. For us, we kind of got an interest in doing specialties in our third year and said, you know, I think this would be kind of fun to specialize in this area. Not necessarily knowing that we were going to develop a, a very strong subspecialty clinic within our practice. I mean, we all do primary care as well, but it's that specialty that kind of sets our practice apart. And within our own clinic, we refer to each other, so it allows us to do that. So getting back to, um, we decided probably about our third year that we wanted to start doing subspecialties, but you know, you don't have to. You can still do primary care, but look for niches. Um, and I'll give you another example. Infancy is a great way to grow a practice. We probably have no bigger or better practice grower in our practice than infancy eye exams, doing pediatrics. And you don't have to specialize in pediatrics to do infancies. Um, for every baby that you get, you've got a good chance of getting two adults out of it too yeah. with the parents. Mm -hmm. And so it is a good way to grow practice. So what do you, what do you love most about private practice? Right. So um, I exist in order to enrich the lives of people so that they can be more successful in their everyday life. That's the reason why I exist and I get up in the morning. Okay. So in order to do that, um, I have to attempt to fulfill that for my, my team, the doctors, as well as my patients. Mm -hmm. And so if I can go to bed at night saying I enriched people's lives and allowed them to work at their greatest potential, I've succeeded. And that's what we attempt to do. I do it through different ways. I do it through specialty contact lenses. I love it when a patient with keratoconus comes in and they have not been able to see or struggle to see and we're able to turn things around for them. That that gives me great joy. Uh, but we all, you know, we do it every day with soft contact lenses or with glasses or telling somebody you know, your eye health is unremarkable. You had an infection before and now you're doing much better. So as long as I can leave the day enriching somebody's life, it, uh, it's a good day. Okay. And now, what would you say is your least favorite part of doing private practice? Yeah, so the challenges of everyday life. Um, you know, every day you need to walk away from your practice feeling like you did something good. And if you're not able to, then you're bummed out. So, you know, we had some staff issues the other day where, you know, some uh, staff member made some really stupid decisions in her personal life that affected her work life. So that's difficult because I have to make sure that the other employees' lives are enriched that employee's lives are enriched and my patient's employee's lives are enriched. So we've had a dent in the system. And so hammering out those dents are the most complicated and most frustrating parts about being in practice. Okay. 
And you also mentioned that you hired an associate, you're also in the process of hiring another one. That's right. What are the qualities that you're looking for in an associate? Yeah, so I want somebody in my practice that has an interest in growing their practice and is willing to work hard to do so. Um, I don't want somebody to walk in the door and just expect patients to show up. I want realistic ex understandings of what it's going to be like to get into practice. And I also, in my practice, because we work around specialties, I want somebody interested in doing something different than what I do. I want somebody that when I see a problem with a patient, I can refer to them in-house. I can refer out low vision. I can refer macular issues. I can refer glaucoma. I'm trained and I can take care of all of those things myself, but somebody who's been done a residency is much more capable than I am. And uh, not, you know, not again uh, that you have to do those sort of things, but that's what I look for in my practice. That's not the same thing that everybody does. Would you say that you're your requirement of a residency is mandatory to be an associate for at your practice? Yeah, so not necessarily, but most likely. Most likely? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that we wouldn't hire the right person, because I have met some people that certainly I would have been interested in hiring, but because I'm looking for a subspecialty, and unless somebody has done some specialty work, it's very difficult for us to, um, to have that happen unless they've done a residency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last thing here is let's just try to play a word association game. Yeah. So I'll say a word and then you just say first thought that comes into your head. Excellent. Okay, so don't hold back. Okay. Just kind of be casual. So future of optometry. Uh, brilliant. Okay. Uh, optometry students. Engaging. AOA. The future. Okay. And vision insurance. A bummer. <laughs> and now medical insurance. Uh, our future again. Okay, okay. Very different perspectives there mm -hmm. on vision and medical insurance. Scope of practice? Expanding. Okay, and last one, private practice. Uh, exciting. <laughs> exciting. I see you wanted to pick a bunch of words yes. there and then you just had to go with Yes, I'm, I'm so excited about private practice. Yeah. I love what I do, I love being the master of my own destiny.